Hello, my name is Dr. Scott Johnson, and this is my presentation entitled Population Control, Pandemics, H5N1, Biological Warfare, and Colloidal Silver, What to Expect and How to Prepare. And if you're familiar with any of my other videos online, this is a condensed, updated version of the avian flu 16-part uh, presentation I have up on YouTube. So there's some information in this particular slideshow that's updated and very, very vital as well. First thing we're going to be talking about relates to population control. And the Georgia Guidestones is the first subject. On one of the highest hilltops in Elbert County, Georgia, stands a huge granite monument. Engraved in eight different languages on four giant stones are ten guides or commandments. Though relatively unknown to most people, these guide stones are an important link to the occult hierarchy that seeks to dominate the world in which we live. Here is a cutaway from one of the commandments on the Georgia Guidestones which says, Be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. The first commandment of the Georgia Guidestones is to maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. You notice that nature is always the excuse Mother Earth, Mother Gaia is always the excuse in order to keep the population at um, very, very low levels. This is an actual cutaway in the slide presentation of that commandment. Unfortunately, limiting the population of the Earth to 500 million will, would require a reduction of over nine-tenths of the world's population. And there's, there's a pie chart there that shows you a representation of that. So nine-tenths of the population, that's quite a bit. But not to be outdone, Ted Turner, the CNN Time Warner mogul, would like to get rid of an even larger chunk of humanity. In an Audubon magazine interview when asked what would be the optimal population level for the entire planet, he said not more than 250 to 350 million people, which this is about a 95% population reduction uh, based on current levels of over 6.5 billion. Speaking about population reduction, globalist Bertrand Russell says, perhaps bacteriological war may prove more effective. If a black death, now remember this was said quite a bit uh, a long time ago, and this is probably one of the most important slides in this whole presentation, because he, he says that perhaps bacteriological War may prove more effective if a black death could be spread throughout the world once in every generation. Survivors could procreate freely without making the world too full. There would be nothing in this to offend the consciences of the devout. So if they could do it in such a way where they could depopulate the world, and we really weren't sure what was going on, there's really going to be nothing in that to offend the consciences of the devout um, and so forth. So let's see if they have a plan in place to do this. Sounding the alarm, Dr. Robert G. Webster of St. Jude's Children's Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee is one of the world's leading infectious disease experts and is credited with being the first to discover the link between the bird flu and the human flu. He says society just can't accept the idea that 50% of the population could die. And I think we have to face that possibility. An excerpt from Dr. Sherry Tenpenny's 3606 special report on the bird flu summit reads, At the summit, UN senior coordinator for the avian and human influenza and special representative to the WHO, which is the World Health Organization, Director General David Nabarro repeatedly used confirmatory language regarding the arrival of the pandemic. This is a picture of David Nabarro. In most of the slides, if I quote somebody, usually I'll try to have a picture of them there. At one point, he commented that systems need to be put in place so that they can be readily activated when the pandemic starts. Without hesitation, Nabarro repeated, note that I said when, not if, the pandemic arrives. Now that's a really strong statement coming from an insider from the UN and the World Health Organization, and at the sound, at the risk of sounding overly suspicious, it sounds like the outcome is predetermined. Now, this is a, an act, th those were all actual quotes from this article, and there's the link to it. So, Dr. Tenpenny's conclusion 
was that it sounded like the outcome had actually been predetermined. Let it also be known that David Nabarro is also the World Health Organization's Executive Director for Sustainable Development. And whenever you hear that word sustainable, that is a New World Order buzzword for depopulation, essentially. They have to do whatever it takes in order for Mother Earth to be able to sustain herself. And the main thing that has to be done is to depopulate the Earth. So that's what s sustainable development means. Now going further, the U.S., this is an um, article from 8-2807 entitled U.S. Under the United Nations Law and Health Emergency. There's not a lot of people that are aware of this, but this actually did take place. This is from Jerome Corsi at World Daily Net. The Security and Prosperity Partnership, or SPP, of North America Summit in Canada released a plan called the North American Plan for Avion in pandemic influenza that establishes United Nations law along with regulations by the World Trade Organization and World Health Organization as the supreme as supreme over US law during a pandemic and sets the stage for militarizing the management of continental health emergencies so if we have a pandemic in America we are under UN law and World Health Organization, World Trade Organization law. World Daily Net could find no evidence the Bush administration presented the Influenza Partnership Plan to Congress for oversight or approval. Now you can read this whole plan. Uh, there's the link to it right there and there's the source article as well. Second Timothy 1 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Psalm 18 2 says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust. So I try to always bring people back to the scriptures because looking at this types of information it become, can become very overwhelming very quickly. This next article is entitled Project BioShield medical martial law and forced vaccinations. This is a picture of President Bush signing Project BioShield on July 21st, 2004. Uh, he signed the $5.6 billion Project BioShield into law. Under Project BioShield, the government can impose mandatory vaccinations on Americans while simultaneously declaring martial law based on any emergency, real or imagined. So as far as implementing uh, UN law, World Health Organization law, mandatory vaccinations, martial law. You can see we've already just looked at two pieces of legislation that could make all that happen in, in, in the event of particularly a pandemic or a mass health crisis. This was an article entitled NORTHCOM prepares for possible pandemic. U.S. Department of Defense announcement, U.S. Northern Command recently hosted representatives from more than 40 international, federal, and state agencies for an exercise designed to determine what governmental actions, including military support, would be necessary in the event of an influenza pandemic in the United States. This was all the way back in uh, uh, January of 06. The infrastructure for incarcerated Americans in the U.S. has already been set up through the governmental actions relating to Operation Cable Splicer, Operation Garden Plot, Rex 84, Field Manual 3-19.40, and Army Regulation 210-35. Now, if you want to know more about those, you can watch my presentation on the Avion Flu, where I get into those a little bit more in depth. U.S. Representative Ron Paul said, when we give the government the power to make medical decisions for us, we in essence accept that the state owns our bodies. 